Hey guys, what's going on? We have a ton of awesome events going on right now. I want to specifically talk about the Dragon Turn Attack Tournament using Epic Champions only, and then we'll jump into the other topics. But this event, if it's worth it or not, it's up to you, but I'm going for the Mithrala Soul. The Eternal Soul Stone is going to be nice for the Deck of Fate starting tomorrow, which is going to be Soul Stones as well as Champion Training. I'll talk about that more in a little while. But Dragon is also having a 3x speed event which is really the only time I like to farm it. So all these events line up to, hey, this is a good time to use an epic only team. So I'm gonna show you all a few different options. The first one is gonna be a speed team. The speed team I'm gonna be using is gonna be Seer, Archmage, Nia, Dark Kale, and Venom Mage. Essentially the team is just having the buffs, Nia's gonna reset Seer, we kill the waves pretty quick, and then we nuke the dragon down with the poison champions. Poisons are gonna be the best bet here. For Seer, round one, round two, round three, these speeds are with the area bonuses on for this specific area. Seer is in Slayer plus Zeal. Archmage is in Regeneration for the next team I want to show you guys. But this is round one, round two, round three. Nia is in some Hydra stuff, maybe Curse, I'm not really sure. It doesn't really matter. Shield set would be great if you had it. Round one, round two, round three. Pay attention to the speeds. You want to make sure that, um, especially, actually, I don't know. The speeds aren't super specific. I'd say you have to worry about something specific, but really as long as Archmage is going before Seer, and ideally Nia is going before Seer as well, it's really going to be fine. Then Venom Mage is in regeneration gear as well. He's also going to be using a different team I want to show you guys after this one. If you're interested in some duo content, I may have just spoiled it, but round one, round two, round three, then Dark Kale, he is in like some pretty, like he's like in a stone skin build for one turn, to help with some damage. I don't know. It's not a great build, but it is the build he's in. They're all fully booked. We have some resistance and accuracy on some of the champions. The champions who need to place debuffs need the accuracy to be good. But the champions who are just um, for this run don't need very high resistance. You can come over to the Hellheady Stages tool website and see what exactly is needed. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Uh, stages tool. We can see Dragon Dungeons. Dragon's Lair, hard, stage nine, hard. We're gonna need, let me separate this tab real quick. For the dragon itself, you're gonna need 330 accuracy and 420 resistance, in case you're curious. It's right there. Hell Heady Sages tool, awesome for all this stuff, especially when it comes to solo and duo stuff, which speaking of, the next team is actually gonna be on stage five hard. Stage 10 hard is a little bit weird. The first enemies in the waves has a Farrakhan, that increases the crit rate, which typically, being strong affinity, we're not going to get crit by the enemies because they have a base 15% crit rate. And we basically, we're not going to be crit by them. But when they boost the crit rate by 15%, well, then we get a potential chance of being crit by them. So not a great situation there, but this is done. Um, this is much easier to speed farm than it is to duo. Duo is going to be more difficult on stage 9 hard, so when it comes to duoing, I would drop down to stage 5 instead. It's still going to be Spirit Affinity. This is going to be a minute to a minute 15. It's going to be pretty quick, very consistent, very safe. Stage 5 hard doesn't have the Farrakhan given the increased crit rate, and then we don't need presets either. So what you have to do, all you have to do, is throw Venom Mage in the lead. Same Venom Mage as before. I'll show these champions builds because this is a little bit more specific. Make sure you're using epic food champions as well. And then we go ahead and get this started. Now, Venom Mage and Arc Mage. Venom Mage and Arc... Yeah, okay. I didn't realize they were both mages. Either way, Venom Mage, and, Venom Mage and Arc Mage Helmet are both in regeneration gear. Neither one of them have Immortal. No other healing set. Just, regener just regeneration. And then we have good HP. We have good speed. We have the proper amount of accuracy and resistance. And masteries that actually make sense. So with Arc Mage... We have War Master to help supplement a little bit of the damage on the dragon because sometimes Venom Mage looks a little bit questionable. But even then, I haven't seen him fail. I haven't seen him get very close to failing either because he takes such little damage. The heal reduction reducing the damage he takes, the decreased attack reducing the damage he takes, makes it to where he can survive very well. And Archmage does a good job also. Archmage is going to be bringing the increased speed, so we got a pretty solid duo setup here. So the speed farm, stage nine hard. The duo, you could do it on stage 5 hard. Now, if you wanted to solo, you could drop it back to normal, do stage 25 normal. But to be honest, with the 3x speed event, I value getting the higher stages of Dragon for sure. Because now we get some 
better chance at speed gear, but also a chance at mythical gear. I'll probably be doing stage nine hard, unless I got a lot of time, then maybe I just do stage five hard. Like if I can walk away from my PC, have it running, we'll see. We'll see how the schedule works out because I would love to also get some champion training done for the deck of fate tomorrow, but that would be waiting to do the farming until then as well. So we get to the dragon. The dragon does the increased attack. So whether you're using Venom Mage, if you're using Orn, if you're using Dark Kale, you really want somebody who can bring a decreased attack, ideally. Dark Kale can do it. He can probably do all this with uh, Archmage pretty much fine. The waves will be a lot slower, though, because the issue is, is that Venom Mage does AoE poisons. Dark Kale is a single target. A Kimptum was another honorable mention. A Kimptum could be awesome. Bringing the poisons plus the spreads and the hex. Very solid there. But this run's going to be about two minutes to two and a half minutes, depending on how quickly the waves go. But it's going to be safe. I mean, you see here, as long as you don't get a bunch of poisons resisted, you're going to be fine. It's going to be safe. It's going to be secure. But the blessings of my Venom Mage are definitely helping. The fact that he has a Blood Shield, he has a Blessing, it is giving him a little bit of extra heals whenever the dragon's hitting. So let's go check out these champions' builds. So with Venom Mage, or sorry, Arc Mage first, we have the following stats in Dragon specifically. You can see here, 57, good HP, 3k plus defense, close to 250 speed, but we have increased speed, not a huge deal. We have more resistance than needed, more accuracy than needed as well. On stage five, the stuff that's needed is going to be 270 accuracy and 360 resistance. We're well over that. For his pieces, I'll just click through them really fast. I rolled two amazing pieces today from the Fire Knight farming yesterday. I logged in. Got this piece, which was actually a quad roll crit damage HP percentage glove. I re-rolled it into HP percentage quad roll defense, which is pretty sweet. And then no joke, right after that, I rolled this piece. That was originally a quad roll useless main stat into a quad roll flat defense. And it rolled a beautiful top tier piece. This is very good. Quad roll essentially. We've got the pre-roll from the mythical piece. Very good there. And some speed. With Archmage, you do want to make sure his crit rate is correct because he needs his crit to proc the stun on everybody but it's, since he has a 30 percent boost from his a2 plus is going to get an extra 15 percent for being strong affinity we only need i think 55 percent total we're going to be good from there uh then he has a defense defense and then resistance so resistance accuracy is gonna be what you need for his masteries we have stuff built more so for the spider epic farming i did a while back but this is all good we have war master everything's solid there and then for Venom, if you have a blessing for Archmage, you could go the um, the healing one that I have on Venom Mage, the emergency heal, if you have a blood shield ring. But if not, it doesn't really matter. Just throw something on there that you like with him. You could do cruelty. You could do phantom touch. You could really do anything. The blessing for him isn't super important. Um, for Venom Mage, it's not necessarily required. But if you can get it, that's going to be great. So with Venom Mage, the total stats for Dragon specifically, 248, good HP, good defense, good speed, Correct accuracy and resistance numbers. Venom Mage also brings 45 accuracy in all battles, so something to keep in mind there. As far as the pieces, I don't know why Venom Mage has a five-piece regeneration set on. That actually I have no clue at all. That's kind of weird, to be fair. Doesn't need this stuff. He can take these boots off probably. Uh, but we're going to leave it for now, just for a little while. And then we have some more resistance and some defense there. So the Blood Shield Ring is just to get that shield so that we can get the heals from this emergency heal. I had the blessing, might as well throw it on him. Everything's fully booked for the masteries. This is what we have. We have a presser, a lot of poisons going up. I want some more turn meter from that. It's going to be great stuff. So with Venom Mage, very easy to build. Very simple setup. The blessing's great if you can get it. If not, it's not required. You can definitely do stage five without a blessing. You can solo the earlier stages as well. Stage five, I don't think is very easily done solo just because the dragon... You have to place enough poisons to actually kill him before he does a big breath. And Venom Mage alone may be kind of difficult. But if you're soloing it, let me know. I'd love to see it. It could be awesome. I'm going to go duo just because it's safer. And it's going to be quicker as well. We don't get the animations from everybody else attacking me. Now, there's a few other things happening this week, guys. We got a super busy week in the game. So if you're doing your dragon solo duo speed team whatever it is good luck hopefully you get some amazing speed gear from that i would love to get some quad roll speed from there as well be awesome week of farming but as far as everything else the first thing is this prism event this prism event is amazing like these champions if you're somebody who is debating on spending and you're somebody who 
doesn't have Venomage, it doesn't have even Aox, or if you're somebody who doesn't have Delaja. I mean, these are all really good champions. Delaja for the Makage Fusion specifically. Not so much a usable champion outside that. That's not what I'm talking about. But these legendaries, literally any of these legendaries could be used with some good success. Especially Pytheon, Fushan for Clan Boss, Draco for Clan Boss, Teox, huge, huge champion. Amazing. If you get him, so good. Nekmo, game changer. These are awesome champions. Even Broodlord's not bad. But Venomage, Skathix, we have a lot of solid Lizardmen. So make sure you're getting the Prism Crystals whenever you can. Picking up these champions and trying your best at some of these. And if you want to spend, this is a pretty valuable situation. I'm not going to do it though. Either way, this is a very good event. So make sure you're picking up the Prism Crystals wherever you can. There is some in the Sand Devil right now. Which is definitely something you want to get. It's just a free sacred. But when it comes to those, don't open them up just yet. We have 4 days and 18 hours on this event. So you're going to be able to work it into the Champion Chase down here. Which Champion Chase gives you points from anything that comes from the portal. So you should get points, no problem from there. So save that stuff for that event. We have, what, today? One, two, three, four. So yeah, you're going to have plenty of time. So don't open up anything. If you were to purchase, say, 200 shards and you went on vacation, the game will pull every one of them until you can't pull any more single pull or whatever. So you're not going to miss your chance of pulling it. Just go ahead and, if you're going to buy them, get them. If you're going to farm them, do it. But then don't pull until the champion chase. Save the points for there. It's what makes the most sense. So up next, we have the deck of fate coming up. The deck of fate is going to be super important to go for. If you're going for Mithral of Souls especially, you, you got to go for this. But also, we're getting some pretty good rewards from it. We're getting some stone skin as well as uh, protection accessories, which are very difficult to get consistently. you got to win Hydra Clash to get those. So now you're going to be able to get them without having to win Hydra Clash. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. I have a lot of champions who are very close to getting like a, a Stone Skin plus Relentless build, Omakage, a Stone Skin plus Savage build, and some various different champions. Like a lot of them are just very close to doing it, but they're just missing one or two top tier pieces. So keep that in mind. Go for this event if you can. This could be a pretty decent Rotos ring. Granted, I would rather this to be HP for him. Flat HP for the main stat. But either way, getting a little bit on a uh, tangent there. But go for the Deck of Fate if you can. With the Deck of Fate, you're going to want to have champions ready, ready to be trained up as well as Soul Stones. Soul Stones are going to be super important because that's where the majority of your points are actually going to come. If you have a lot of them, it's going to be easy. If you don't have a lot, you're going to have to do a lot of champion training probably. So keep that in mind. If you can get Soul Stone points from anywhere, go ahead and pick it up. Go ahead and do it. It's going to be extremely, extremely valuable. Then, up next, we have, let's see, the Sacred Legendary, the Sacred Event. I don't think I talked about that in this recording. I did a previous recording where I did talk about that, but I don't think I mentioned it here. We have a extra legendary event for Sacreds coming up. Sacreds, though, it's a weird thing about them, is that you gotta summon 12 for Mercy to even kick in, but then it kicks in at a 2% chance each time. So you end up gotta summoning, like, 40 or 50 Sacred Shards before guaranteed a Legendary. So to be honest... If you've pulled a lot, your chances of getting a Legendary are better. But even then, they're pretty small. They're pretty low. So best of luck if you go for it. I would definitely be mindful of future upcoming Ninja events. Because Ninja Soul is going to be offered to us. And if you want that, if you're going to try for that 5-star, assumably Soul, then you're going to want to save your shards. Unless you're a big whale, big spinner, then none of this really matters. But if you're somebody who's trying to be more conservative, then keep in mind, if you blow your shards now... You may not have shards for the ninja stuff coming up in the future, which may be more valuable for you. So, extra legendary events are awesome, but they're risky as well. So guys, there we go. That's the dragon event, the deck of fate, the prism event, and the sacred legendary, the extra sacred, extra legendary from a sacred shard. Either way, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one.